Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Stanley number FBB179, three and a half by three, polished brass. This is a hinge. I'm trying to show you the part number here. We'll have some focused pictures in a moment. Um, this is what the hinge looks like. This is the hinge. A smart little uh, hinge that you see here. FBB 179, three and a half by three. Why is it smart? It's smart because it's narrower than it is tall. Meaning, in most instances, we're dealing with three and a half by three and a half, four by four, four and a half by four and a half, five by five. Hinges don't have to be square. The width is the second dimension. This is narrower than it is tall, and that's because when a door opens to 90 degree, it doesn't really much matter what that vertical axis of pivoting offset is. But if your door needs to go to 180 degrees, you have to really start to think about what's my vertical axis of pivoting? What's the width of the hinge? In many instances, you need to account for either a deeper inset than standard, which is less common, or more commonly, casing that's applied to the frame. That's where you want to shift your vertical axis of pivoting out further. But in most instances, when there's nothing unusual occurring, a narrower than tall hinge would suffice. What makes that smart is that you move the vertical axis of pivoting closer to the center of the thickness of the door, allowing the hinge to do its job more smartly. Okay, The mechanics are better because you've got that weight closer to the center of the thickness of the door. So, And we'll take a look at a wide throw, a formula to determine wide throw. But 3.5 by 3 or 4 by 3.5, it could be a better option than a 3.5 by 3.5 because you don't want projecting hardware, needless projecting hardware. You want to keep that vertical axis of pivoting tucked as close to the center of the thickness as possible. How you determine that, we'll go over that. So this is an FBB 179. That means a multitude of things. It does mean that it is made of steel. It also means that it is a uh, ball bearing hinge. Because it's a standard weight hinge, this should be about 123 thousandths leaf thickness would be my guess. Let's take a look. Yeah, the calipers say 120. I'm sure the template says that this is 123 thousandths. It does. Um, so it means it means that it's standard weight, and that would be about 123 thousandths. It means that it's five knuckle. Okay, it means that it's full mortise. You can see from the bend on the hinge leaves here that when they're brought parallel, they're meant to be mortised flush to the edge of the door and frame. Um, that's what all of that means. Okay. This being a three and a half inch tall hinge, and the height is the first dimension. That's really important to know. If ever, if you're only ever dealing with three and a half by three and a half and four by four, you can get by not knowing which dimension is which. But as a matter of fact, the height is the first dimension. That does matter when you're prepping material and you're ordering four by three and a half, or four and a half by six, or eight by six, or three and a half by three. You need to know how tall that prep is. Why does the height come first? Um, in a hinge, you know, my my theory is you need to know both dimensions on a hinge, like you would on a door as well. You need to know how wide it is, but how tall it is. The order in which you're given the information, I think, is prioritized. When it comes to a door, what do you want to know first? The height? Maybe, but the width is really something more important. Tell me that first. It's like, if, if I'm going to say drive from here to here, do you want to know at rate at what rate of speed to drive first, or do you want to know what direction to head in first? You need both, um, but but tell me which way to head first. And I, that's what I think the deal is with with hinges. Hinges are the opposite of of doors, how they're measured. Um, and why is that the case? Probably be just because of prioritization of what information should come first. Uh, important to know when you're dealing with three and a half by with anything that's not square, you need you need you'll need to be sure that you understand that. I did a job one time where it was five by four and a half, five by four and a half, and I sent out the doors and frames. They were all prepped for four and a half, 
And that's because I assumed that the height was the first dimension. Uh, pardon me, I assumed that it was like doors. The height was the second dimension. And the, the long story short, the client called and says, yeah, these were supposed to be for five by four and a half inch hinges. And I said, they are. He says, no, the hinges are four and a half tall. I says, I know, that's what I sent you. He's like, there's a problem, there's something wrong. And then it occurred to me, my definition of hinge sizing was incorrect. Those were three foot six or four O stairwell doors. The textbook would tell us those need to be five inch tall. Um, luckily, there were only a couple, three of the openings. The wall, the frames were already set in their wet concrete T-anchored installations up on the 17th floor of this tower. And, you know, the client just said, listen, these are low volume use. I don't think we're going to have a problem. Let's just let it go. Um, and I sent him four and a half by five hinges. I sent him wide throw hinges. And what the client said was, well, I can't, I don't want to use these five inch wide hinges. Why don't you get me some four and a half, four and a half, but because the doors and frames were convertible to heavyweight, why don't you make them heavyweight and we'll swap the hinges. And that's how that worked out. Um, nothing came of it. Uh, and I got really lucky that I learned a life lesson in hardware uh, without needing to rip those frames out or, or something alternative. That was so early in the career, continuous geared aluminum hinges by Roton um, before they were owned by Hager was not that common. Um, about that time, they were just starting to become something that, hey, maybe we should stock those. Anyway, a height's the first dimension. Uh, these will include fasteners, all wood screws and all machine screws. Uh, it's important to know uh, what you're getting. By all means, indicate in the comment field the type of the door and frame that you're working with. Is it wood? Is it metal? I want to make sure that the screws come with the prop, the hinges come with the proper fasteners. There's a chance that they won't, um, in the sense that, you know, what would you send for a four, a three and a half by three? Would you need any machine screws? Eh, could be. A lot of 20, 30 story buildings along Lake Michigan and Chicago from the Gold Coast all the way up to Evanston. Those are all built in the 60s and 70s, many of them. And they're steel frames. The original construction was uh, steel frames for inch and three eighths doors. Three and a half by three would be a perfect hinge for that um, application. So define that. No one wants to assume you have a wood door and a wood frame because you may not. Um, is it practice for them to send all of each? Apparently in this, on this order, at this time it was. Um, but I did a job where a client, we did some eight by sixes or eight by eight, it was eight by six. And the client got only half the wood screws. He says, what a, why did I get all machine screws and only half wood screws? Who would use machine screws on an eight by six hinge? I says, I don't see how anyone could. Uh, is it possible? Of course it's possible, but it wouldn't be what we would guess. And they come from Stanley, and Stanley's a great quality hinge. I am, I, I will be quite frank that I am most partial to Stanley because of the fit and finish. It's a smart, clean looking hinge. The problem is it takes weeks to get material because it's manufactured on mainland China. Um, so define that in the comment field, and then you'll, then, then the obligation is for the factory to get it correct. And there's been a couple of instances where I've said what I need, and they still shipped it incorrect. The good thing is I've def we've specified it. You know, we've, we've, we've lowered our risk of things getting done incorrectly as m to the closest of zero that we can arrive at. Let's switch to the screen view and let's take a closer look at some supporting information. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Okay, so here's the hinge we're looking at. Speaking of looking, this is just a generic factory supplied image. Um, we do have some photographs. Here's the label. It's very difficult to photograph polished brass. 
This is a cross-section showing the swag or the bend on the hinge leaves. This is literally the DNA of a hinge, how the leaves are bent. You change that bend angle, you change the hinge completely. The back side of the hinge, it's nice that it's finished back here. You obviously see this when the door's in the closed position. It has the FBB 179 stamp on the back. Uh, Stanley does a good job with stamping the back of some of their hinges um, so that you can look at it and know what you're dealing with. Uh, Close-up view, albeit a little blurry, a little fuzzy, showing the Stanley logo. I like the Stanley logo, not necessarily in the sense of its design, but in the sense of its size. It's, re it's petite. Other manufacturers really have a giant logo that goes on their hinge. That's just not necessary. I don't like corporate advertising on my hardware any more than the next person. Uh, then your screw package. These are what are called undercut head. Flat undercut head. That allows you to get a flat head screw down to something that's relatively thin so they undercut the head. Okay, now extended description information, three and a half by three. These are ball bearing. Why would you want that? Well, higher frequency use, uh, maybe a heavier door, or just the fact that you know Sooner or later, plain bearing hinges are going to wear out, and you are going to save yourself the trouble 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now in replacing that hinge after the door has sagged to the point where the hinges become loose and the door doesn't latch. Ball bearing hinges are really not that much more money. Um, ex you know, If you're dealing with scores or hundreds of hinges, sure, that price is going to be different. But in a typical installation, um, typical size installation, I wouldn't use a plain bearing hinge at all. I would use ball bearing in almost all instances. If it's a linen closet and you've got a one foot eight hollow core door and you open it, you know, eight times a week, sure. Uh, but ball bearing is a much smoother operating hinge. You'll, you'll appreciate the performance. Um, the gauge, Stanley permanently lubricated non-detachable ball bearings. The only downside, I think, of a hinge like this, of a ball bearing hinge, is that you see the bearing packets. Stanley has a line of concealed bearing hinges, a much cleaner look. This is a five knuckle hinge. They also do two and three knuckle hinges, very clean look. Um, tech drawing, let's take a look at what that is. Okay, this is a template. This is just going to show us the dimensional properties of our FBB 179. These are the sizes you can do a three and a half inch hinge in, three, three and a half, five, and six inch wide. Okay. The location of the screw holes. This is what's called a template. This document is called a template. Uh, the location of the screw holes is called the template pattern. So if you have a door and a frame prepped for the screw holes at the template pattern, it will comply with this hinge. This hinge will fit. Uh, is what I'm driving at. Also give you the swag line, the F dimension. Some people ask, how wide is the, uh, you know, how wide is that hinge leaf? What's the outside diameter of the barrel? People ask those questions, so they put it there. Uh, this hinge can be done in quarter inch and five eighths radius as well. This is a square corner hinge. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, installation template. Yeah, not too much to see here. This is just a uh, generic document. Cut sheet is probably uh, nice to look at because it will tell you the other part numbers. The 179 is a steel hinge. The 191 can be done in brass or bronze or stainless steel. And then all of the finishes that you can do on a non-ferrous base material. This shows all the sizes that the FBB 179 can be done in from three and a half by three all the way up to six by six. The thickness of the leaf changes other important information is here, the standard um, fastener that would be included. You'll note um, they list the quantity here. You get up to a 6x6 six six inch, that's going to be a quarter 20 flathead machine screw. For medium weight doors of average frequency use, template pattern, permanent lubricated non-detachable bearings. Other options, you can do this, you can change this hinge into a raised barrel hinge, power transfer, hospital tip, decorative tips, ball, tip, urn, steeple. The standard hinge 
tip is called a button tip. That's just what that's called. You can use your imagination and see why we would call it that. Security studs and non-removable pins are available as well, and I'll we'll touch on those. Now, I talked about the formula for wide throw. Let's talk about that now. If you've not hit subscribe yet, we would very much appreciate if you did, and hopefully you're enjoying this video. Now, let's get back to it. Okay, the formula for wide throw. Um, let's get there. There's a link below this video as seen here to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the Stanley products we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website here, as well as a link to their product catalog. I like the 2010 architectural hardware catalog. The first couple three dozen pages are an encyclopedic reference to the world of hinges. If you're an, an architect, a designer, a distributor, a manufacturer, an installer, a specifier, it would be very useful to understand the basic terminology of hinges so that you can understand how to apply terms as to, uh, as to how it may apply to your application. So as you scroll through the catalog, general information. Stanley does a great job. They're not the only company that does a great job, but not every hinge manufacturer does as good of a job as Stanley. Goes over the different types of hinges here, whether it be full mortise, half mortise, half surface, full surface. That's going to be a swing clear, different variants of swing clear hinges. Um, we had mentioned raised barrel earlier. And I'm going to scroll past where I want to end up to show you the raised barrel. I'm sorry, we're really getting past where I wanted to be on that. There we go, raised barrel. I, I slid right past it. So you can see how you change that bend. A raised barrel hinge is appropriate because if you have a deep inset, that barrel can't sit inside of that area because it's prevented from doing so. Another option for a raised barrel hinge would be a wide throw hinge where you move that vertical axis of pivoting out here. But if you're not going to need to open the door past, you know, about 92 degree or so, um, raised barrel hinge could be the way to go. Now, since we're, we'll, we'll go backwards, I suppose. Decorative tips, steeple, ball, crown, I had mentioned, urn and uh, acorn I think Stanley doesn't offer those but here are their decorative tips steeple tips are nice they're uh, larger than it seems they're they're quite tall hospital tips where that's ligature resistant uh, they do make olive knuckle hinges Stanley does not the only people who do but they've been making it for many many decades uh, power transfer hinges if you need to get low voltage into the door or out of, you know, to, to something in the door. Uh, now, our wide throw. So we are, we're not dealing with a wide throw hinge. If this was 3.5 by 5 or 3.5 by 6, we would. But we're still dealing with needing to calculate the width of the hinge. And the formula is really simple. And it's, it's shown to us here what you have to take into account. What's your back set? What's your door thickness? What's your clearance? What's your inset? The wide throw formula is on page 7. So let's get to page 7. Here it is. They devote a good half a page to this. So the formula is door thickness minus back set. So let's say we've got inch and 3 eighths, thick door, minus a quarter inch back set. That's inch and an eighth. Multiply that by 2, that's 2 and a quarter. Add your inset. Let's say that that's zero or practically zero. Let's say it's an eighth of an inch. Okay, now we're at two and three eighths. Your clearance could be half of an inch for casing. That makes it two and seven eighths. Go to the next widest hinge is what they tell us. So why would you order a three and a half inch hinge? All that's going to do is force that hinge to hang off the face of the door and frame an additional quarter inch. So the point is run the formula, order the hinge accordingly, um, and you will have a smarter installation. The rest of this catalog in the general um, information section is just extremely helpful. Terminology and whatnot. Uh, there's also a 1954 Stanley cabinet hardware product catalog. I knew 
and had forgotten that we have this listed here. That's neat. You want to see what, see what Stanley was doing 70 years ago when it comes to kitchen cabinet hardware? There it is. It's kind of fun. All right, let's wrap up this video on camera. If you've made it this far into this video, you must be determined to see it through to the end, and we appreciate your hanging in there with us and watching this entire video. It means a lot. It takes a lot of work to create these videos in the sense that, um, you know, it's time taken away from doing other things. However, the advantage for me personally of creating these videos is the fact that it does allow myself to either learn about something new, to uh, reacquaint myself with something, or to reinforce what I believe that I already know. Any comments that you might leave down below would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. In conclusion, good quality hinge uh, by Stanley. I wouldn't hesitate to use this hinge at all. It's not unusual to bump into Stanley hinges that have been in service for several decades. I mean, several decades. 50 years is a walk in the park for some Stanley hinges, especially their CB line, their concealed bearing line. Um, three knuckle hinges, concealed bearing, just or a five knuckle. It's really nice because the, the, the barrel is very clean in a concealed bearing hinge. And Stanley will entertain requests that other manufacturers will just say no to. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of an example of when I last used, when Stanley was the only option for something. Oh, it escapes me, but I've, I've leaned on Stanley f multiple times for stuff that other people just took a pass on. Um, well, anyway, um, know that Stanley is a full-line provider of uh, commercial, architectural, institutional hinges, residential hinges as well. Maybe not full-line provider of residential hinges. Uh, but they're very accommodating, I think, is the takeaway. The only downside is that if it's not in stock, it's going to take six weeks. It's not that it's the manufacturing process. It's the fact that it has to go around the globe um, to get here. This box uh, is also going to contain some cardboard shims. Those are handy uh, to not only use as packing material to insulate the different hinges from each other during shipping, but if you do have to shim the opening, the door, you can use that cardboard shim uh, for that purpose. Um, Stanley also has a line of pivots, uh, wardrobe pivots, that we do keep in stock. The 341, the 327, uh, other part numbers like that, and you'll find those in that catalog. Any questions on the FBB 179, three and a half by three in a US 3 finish? US 3 means it's polished brass. This is a steel-based hinge. It would be more accurate to call it 632 finish, which means steel base polished brass finish. Any questions on that or any other Stanley product, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you. Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up, please subscribe, and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.